Well, over there, YouTube, as well as other sites, I do put these videos up on Rumble and Odyssey, and believe it or not, I do occasionally check them. I know people don't think I do, because I've seen the comments on there where they claim that I don't check them. Um, admittedly, I don't check that often. Uh, I have maybe 20 followers on Odyssey and about the same on Rumble. So, um, yeah, if you do follow me on those, I do appreciate that you follow me, but be aware that there's less than 100 of you on those sites, and there's 1,500 of you on YouTube, so I go where the people are. At the same point, I upload to other, other uh, sites because I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket, and I know that YouTube can be fickle as hell. So, yeah, hello to everyone. I am here to uh, to chat about just general stuff at the moment. This is just a vlog describing what my life is like and to lament ADHD. Because if you don't know, I have ADHD. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with, uh, with the terms, ADHD is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. It is on the autistic spectrum, or at least it's connected to the autistic spectrum. I actually have a more complicated diagnosis. I have ADHD with associated... Uh, higher Functioning Autistic Spectrum Disorder, which is doctor speak for we don't actually know. Um, <laughs> what it means is that I'm somewhere on the autistic spectrum, but I don't fall neatly into any of the categories. I'm not aspergic, uh, and I'm not um, in any of the other predetermined autistic categories, and I don't just have normal ADHD either. I have something else. But either way, that's how I'm uh, categorised, and I'm on various medications. I have my tablets here. Um, this is one of my tablet wheels, um, where I'm on uh, I'm on tapiramate for my migraines. I'm on Xenadate uh, for the ADHD. I'm on other medications as well. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, this is my other one as well. Got painkillers and the like in there. I'm on a lot of medication. I've also got chronic fatigue, chronic pain. I have a lot of problems, not just um, not just learning difficulties, which are physical, not mental. A lot of people think it's a mental uh, disability, something like ADHD or autism. It's not. It's physical. Um, it's a chemical imbalance in the brain. It's something you can physically measure. You can literally take samples and you can measure that there is a chemical imbalance. It's not just something that can't be measured. A lot of mental illness is something that can't rightly be measured in the same way that a physical illness can be. It doesn't mean, mean that it's less true. Um, for example, I also have clinical depression. And I've been treated for clinical depression for a while. I used to be on metazapine, which is a uh, an antidepressant. I'm no longer on it. I've been off metazapine now for uh, over a year. And it's been really good to actually be off it, uh, to be able to try to cope with it myself. It, there is every possibility that I put, maybe should be back on it, because I have noticed that I tend to spiral occasionally. And sometimes I'll find that I'll look around my uh, my house, and my house is a tip. And I've not been eating properly. I've not been looking after myself. And like, I've been in a spiral of depression for the last two weeks and I've not noticed until now. And that's the kind of thing I would have needed an antidepressant for. Maybe I came off it too soon. But at the same point, I feel much better in myself. And it did make me drowsy in a lot of ways. So I was glad to be off it. But it did help while I was on it. And um, yeah, uh, there's no issue with antidepressants. I was uh, Obviously, I was depressed for very uh, clear reasons. I have a lot of problems. I have mobility problems, I have you know, physical pain issues, and um, I have you know, issues with fatigue, so I'm always tired, I'm always in pain, I struggle to move. So I've got a lot of issues. But this video is less about that, and more for me to shame myself publicly and on the internet by showing the, uh, the entire world how little willpower I have as a grown man in his mid to late 30s. So, I don't really do anything. Um, I'm on disability, I don't work, and um, this lack of a job should mean that I should get a lot done. I run various different role-playing games. I have a D&D &D game and a GURPS game that I run. Uh, I really enjoy writing and running for those. I have been writing my own books for years now. Uh, I have multiple different novels I've been writing, all of which are in various different half-written planning stages, none of which are even close to being published already. And the reason for that is I have no discipline. I have no real sense of organisation. 
and that's a mixture of because of the ADHD and the fatigue. I very rarely have any real time, and when I do have time, I can't use it effectively. What I have found is I also have a very addictive personality. Uh, I can fall into addictions. Um, I could very easily develop a gambling addiction. I've come close a couple of times. Um, I could easily get addicted to things like stupid microtransactions in video games. Gacha games and the like are something I have to watch out for because if I get taken in by one, I can quickly blow money on them. I have done so in the past. I've done so recently as well. Um, I thought, oh yeah, I found a mobile game that's not too bad actually. I've only spent a couple of quid, but I've spent a couple of quid. And then I spent another couple of quid, and then I spent another couple of quid. And before I realised, in about three months I'd spent £100 on this game. It wasn't a good game. It wasn't a game I was actually having fun with. But I was spending time with it. It was only because I missed a couple of streaks, and I missed a couple of the uh, the daily bonuses that made me lose uh, my, uh, my daily streak bonuses. Which me- meant that I was knocked off some of my progression things. I, I lost interest. If I had something that like froze my progression so I could keep it going, I would probably have still played it for weeks on end. <coughs> because I was uh, I was very much developing an addiction to it. But I could, that addiction can go in any direction. Like <coughs> alcohol is thankfully something that I've never ha- I've never really struggled with. This is very close to empty, but I've had this for over a year. Um, this is um, this is a bottle that I got at the beginning of 2022, and it's now uh, the end of February 2023. So it's lasted a long time. I've I've got another full bottle I got for Christmas. I've not opened it yet. Um, now if I can go through a bottle of Southern Comfort a year, I'm fairly sure I can say I'm not an alcoholic. But I could very easily get into drinking and become an alcoholic. I could easily just open this and just swig away. And I could get into the habit of taking a swig or two every day. And before I know what's going on, I could be doing that three or four times a day. And I could become an alcoholic. I have to watch myself because I know what I'm likely to to become. My biggest addiction is food. I'm a very, very big fat guy. Because I can't exercise, I can't move. I have piled on weight. I'm over 400 pound. That's not good. So I need to watch my weight. Weight is something that I'm struggling with. Food is something I'm struggling with, especially because I can order food and have it just delivered to my front door whenever I want. So that's something I'm having to really focus on. I also tend to overspend. I don't have a lot of money. I'm reliant on benefits. I'm reliant on the money that is is just given to me through whatever systems are in place. So I get disability benefits. Um, I get... Uh, employment and support allowance, which is something that everyone who isn't working gets, whether you're on disability or not. And that's the benefits I get in Britain. Now, that's just enough to live on, basically. It's enough that I can live a reasonably um, comfortable life. Uh, I don't have a, uh, a particularly large uh, you know, lifestyle. I don't have a large home. I have a one-bedroom house. I don't smoke. I barely drink, as you can see. I, I don't run a car. I don't gamble. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't go out. I don't you know go out to nightclubs things like that. I don't have any really expensive hobbies. So, for me, money is quite. I'm quite frugal with money. My big expense would be food because I will order a takeaway two or three times a week if you let me comfortably. Um, I will order a takeaway. In fact, I'd order a takeaway five times a week if you let me. Uh, so I've I've got to be aware that I would fall into that habit. I, I'll go, oh, I, I just fancy a pizza, order a pizza. I fancy a Chinese, order that. So I need to stop myself from doing that. The one thing that I have noticed is time. Now, I run a channel which is predominantly a BookTube channel. Though it's not really. It's an everything channel. It's BookTube in the, the majority of the videos or bookish videos. And I talk to other BookTubers and it's become... Booktube adjacent, but it's an everything channel. I've talked about gaming. I've talked about um, politics. I've talked. Uh, I've talked about D and D. Like it's an everything channel, and this this video is a good example of this. This is just a vlog, so this is a me channel, and Booktube is just part of me. 
Um, and that's another ex- another good excuse as to why I clearly don't have any real focus in that if I really wanted to be popular on YouTube, if I'd set this channel up to be a vlog channel and then set up individual channels for BookTube and gaming and D&D and just posted those videos to those, th- those three different channels, I could have four successful channels because the people who want book- BookTube content would watch my bookish videos. The people who want gaming videos would watch my gaming videos and vice yeah, vice versa. Um, they're not going to watch all of them. Like The people who are interested in bookish content don't care about D&D. And the people who watch D&D do not care about my video game content and vice, uh, and, you know, vice versa. This is something that I know, but I still do it this way. I still just put everything on the me channel. Like, this is just the stuff I make, and I know that only, like, 50 people are going to watch some tra- some videos. I put them up anyway. I could make, you know, certain videos and get three or 4,000 views, and I know I could, but I don't do it. Uh, and it, it's my, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy. But then, you know, what is success on YouTube is, you know, is the 17p... Uh, every every week or so really going to make all that much of a difference to my life. Like, this channel is monetized. You may have seen an advert before this video, because this video will be monetized. All my videos are monetized. But I'm monetized in a very specific way. I only have them base level monetized, where it has that one skippable ad at the beginning, because YouTube can do that to any video anyway, even if it's not monetized. Um, I may as well get a cut. But if I set it to monetized, it's more like to show up in the search engines and things like that, so more people are going to find the video. Um, I I don't put like pre-roll, post-roll, mid-roll ads. I hate all of that. I really, really hate advertising in videos. Um, I I have YouTube Premium specifically because I absolutely can't stand adverts, and I recommend that everyone get YouTube Premium if they're you know a big user of YouTube. Like I know a lot of people are against it, but honestly, for all the faults I've got with YouTube, it's the service I use the most. So I I can justifiably say I spend money on YouTube because it's a product I use and they deserve my money. Like, yes, I've got problems with it, but I can't I can't with good conscience say I don't use the service and they don't deserve that money. So I'm happy to spend the money on it. But anyway, like I say, I don't have a great deal of money. I do get a fair bit of money actually through Patreon. I've got uh, I've got a small amount of Patreon supporters, but a few of you are way more generous than uh, than you should be. Um, and two of you in particular are far more generous than you need to be. Um, I'll be fair. Uh, that Patreon has literally paid to keep my lights on. Like that, that, I'm not joking. That Patreon has been more than is reasonable. Um, like it's um, it's it's enough that the Patreon subscri- the subscriptions have been paying my gas bill. Um, Almost entirely for the last like four months, they they it's it's been almost exactly the same amount. Like my heating bill comes to about the same as what I get on Patreon. So that's one bill out. And as you know, if you've been paying attention to the news, the way that gas prices have been going in the UK recently with energy, bloody dogs barking. Don't know if you can hear that. Are you quite finished? But the way the energy has, uh, the, the way the energy prices have been in Britain at the moment, it's just, it's just madness. So, um, what used to be a very manageable bill has more than tripled. So, yeah, my uh, my gas prices went through the roof. And uh, yeah, if it wasn't for Patreon, I would probably have had to, had to make some very very uh, uh, telling cuts in my uh, my lifestyle. My lifestyle's not that. Extreme. That dog's not going to stop. I'll try and cut it out. Well, don't stop barking now. I'm going to be quiet so I can get a sample of you barking. No, no. It's going to shut up. If I start talking again, it'll start barking. I was going to try and get a sample of it barking so I can put it through the, the audio filter and filter out the barking. But no, it's going to keep fucking going, isn't it? Now, I have something here to show you, and this is a technique that I'm using to try to control my ADHD a little, because like I say, this is predominantly a booktube channel, 
I don't read enough books. I don't put enough time into reading. I don't put enough time into making these videos. I don't organise myself. I'm not writing my books enough. I'm not using my time effectively. What am I doing with my time? Well, I keep a bullet journal, which I've shown off before. And I mark on my bullet journal each day. And I mark each hour of each day with a different colour. And each box indicates how I spent that hour. Now, if I look back, I spent way more of my time than I ever should watching YouTube or just idly scrolling through social media and doing nothing really productive. Playing video games, less so, but I do do that a fair bit. Watching TV, again less so, but I do do that a fair bit. But it's mainly watching YouTube and scrolling through social media. So, I need to control this. Now, I can't get rid of this phone. I'm going to need this because people call me and I need to be able to answer it. So, the only thing I can do is block certain apps. So, I'm going to basically stick a parental lock system on my phone and I'm going to give the password to my sister. So, I can't open certain apps. So, things like Reddit and Twitter and Facebook, they're all going to be locked on my phone. So, I can't use them. I'll still be able to use them on my computer. I'll still be able to use them on my tablet. But I won't be able to use them on my phone. This is so I can still answer a phone call, but I won't be able to answer those things. That's good, because I need to get off my phone. I need to be able to pick up a book and read a book without being distracted all the time. Now, I'm not going to block Gilded, because the Gilded community is something I want to foster and want to keep going. So that does mean I could theoretically waste my time away on Gilded. I'm aware of that. That's going to be something that I'm going to have to monitor on my own. But that's okay. That's my community. Building up my community is the one thing I will allow myself. So, what am I going to be doing with uh, with the other stuff in order to try and control myself? Well, this is, again, I'll remind you, I'm a man in my mid to late 30s. And this is what I'm doing. I have this. This is a chest. This is a lock. I am dead serious. In this chest, I have the following things. The mouse for my PC. The TV remote control. My tablet. My PS5 controller, which yes, is bright hot pink. Because pink is a manly colour. Now, what does putting them in a chest achieve? Very little you'd, you'd suspect I can just open the chest and take them out. But that's not strictly true, because I have this lock, which I'm going to demonstrate. This lock is a timer lock, which I have just set to one minute. It is now locked. It will not open. It is not going to open now. For another 53 seconds. I cannot open it. This is solid. Yeah? It's not going to open. So if I set this to 4 hours. And I can't use my PC, my tablet, my PlayStation or my TV for 4 hours. That leaves me with only a few options. Either I'm going to read a goddamn book. Or I'm going to record a video. At which point, I'm going to actually finish reading the books I'm supposed to be reading, aren't I? Because I've got nothing else to do. can't do anything else. Now, what about writing? Because I can't write if the uh, if I can't use my PC. Well, that's where I've got another little way around. You see, I don't have it yet, 
But I am going to be getting a... That's just opened. I'm going to be getting a laptop. This laptop will not have wireless capability. It is basically just going to be a notebook. It's going to have no ability to access the internet. And um, it will have the the only thing capable that it can do is it will be able to write. So I'll have word processing capability. It's going to be a very basic word processor. It's going to be one of the oldest pieces of shit laptops you can think of. It's going to be the, the most ancient thing you've ever seen. I actually already have a few old laptops. I'm just going to basically get one refurbished. Because I've got a few old laptops that I've had sitting around for a good long while. I just need to find one, get it repaired. It's going to cost me maybe 50 quid. Once I've got that set up, I'm going to transfer all the files for all the half-written books that I've got. I'm going to put them all onto one uh, external drive. And I'm going to use that as my write, uh, as my writing you know, base. And I'm going to spend that time writing. I'm going to read. I'm going to write. I'm going to make videos. I'm actually going to focus on doing the things I want to do. Because one of the things that I've noticed is that I cannot be left alone. I cannot be trusted to be left alone. So, by monitoring what I'm doing in this bullet journal, and by locking shit away in my chest... And making it so I cannot get, I cannot get to it. I am going to ensure that I'm actually going to do things appropriately. This is what's necessary. This is the, the levels that you have to go to with ADHD. And I say this not because not because I need to say this, but because I want to keep myself accountable. And I say this because I want to show the world. What ADHD is like. The levels that you have to go to. To trick your own goddamn brain into behaving when, you, when you're when you on the spectrum. Because when you're on the autistic spectrum, you can't just... You can't just decide to do stuff. You can't just go, I'm gonna read this book and then sit down and read it. Because you won't. You won't sit down and read it. You'll sit down with the book and then you'll fidget and then you'll switch the telly on and then you'll fiddle with your phone and then you'll go up and you'll do something else and then you'll decide to put your books in alphabetical order again. And yeah, before you know what's going on, you've wasted four hours. And four hours you could have spent reading. Now, I'm not saying I'm not going to waste time. I could waste time. There's every possibility I lock that chest up. I can't do anything with all of my uh, my entertainment. And suddenly, I find myself upstairs playing with the cats for three hours. Like, that could happen. <laughs> I could do that. But, that's not going to happen every day. And eventually, I'm going to get into a position where I'm going to have to relent. And I'm going to have to give in to the fact that I have taken away every possibility other than reading the books I have, writing the books that I'm writing, and making the videos that I keep promising myself I'm going to make. I'm going to have to do these things because it's the only things that I've left myself the option to do. That's the way I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to operate. Eventually, by doing it that way, I'll have built a habit that will force me to use my time effectively. I hate that I have to baby myself like this. But the thing is, I am neurodivergent. I am not neurotypical. And neurotypical methods do not work. I can't assume I'm going to have the willpower to do things the way I should. I'm not. So these are my tactics. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think I'm being ridiculous. Or if this is uh, an ingenious way of making sure I actually use my time effectively. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Try not to judge me too hard for exposing just how, just how sad and pathetic <laughs> I can truly be. See you next time. Bye.